All right. So welcome to yoga. Find yourself a place to sit here. Um, blanket, a bolster, a pillow, a block, whatever might make you comfortable. And before you close your eyes, if you are going to close your eyes, I'm going to give you a little bit of um, guidance about how to use your hand for this breathwork technique. So we are close to the solstice, the summer solstice, and at these times of um, the turning of the wheel, each time of the year, the equinoxes and the solstices, we try to do this same breathwork technique. It's called Nadi Shodhana. And it's to balance out the <clears throat> energy from left to right, solar, lunar, masculine, feminine, really how we see ourselves as doing um, and being. How do we see that in our lives? And so to find that kind of a balance. So the hand gesture that we're going to use is to take your right hand, if that's dominant, I always say try it out with your left hand if you're left-handed. So right hand. And then just taking your pointer finger and your middle finger down to your palm. And you're gonna press your ring finger and pinky finger together. And then you're using this thumb here. So you're gonna take your thumb and you're gonna use that one to cover your right nostril. And then you're gonna alternate and use the other two fingers to cover your left nostril. So that's what we're gonna do when we eventually start to move back and forth side to side. So if you can just remember that, let that sink into your, muscle tissue memory. And then if you want to close your eyes, you can. If you want to leave the eyes open, maybe just gaze off into the distance. If you can see out a window, that would probably be lovely. And then maybe just take a moment just to orient your body to this seated position. Just check in to see if you need to move around a little bit. Right, so maybe you wanna switch your legs every once in a while if you always have one leg in front or on top. If you have a tendency to kind of tuck under and round your low back, you might wanna to tip to the front of your sits bones so that you can feel yourself sitting up good and tall, lots of space between the low ribs and the pelvis. Good, and then just softening your mouth right into the jaw. You might feel your tongue drop down into the base of your mouth, right? Just the lips are gently touching. There's probably some space in between your teeth. And then if you can just start to notice your breath moving in and out. So it helps for some of us to kind of Notice the temperature, so the breath in is cool. You feel the cool air coming in through the nostrils. You feel that breath moving through the body. And then as you breathe it out, it feels warm. So again, noticing, just noticing the breath as it moves in. Cool air moving in, moving through. And then warm air moving out. Good, so if you're feeling that reference of temperature or you just maybe even feeling the movement of the air in and out through the nostrils, you might want to notice now when you breathe in, is there more air going through the right or the left nostril? And this is a quick uh, question and inquiry you can sit in even if you can't experience it or notice it right now as you breathe out, also notice right? More warmth in the right side or the left side. And then when you breathe in again, get curious, inquire about the movement of the air in, right and left side. And then as you breathe out, once again, notice. Good. And you might be aware of things being balanced. You might be aware of there being more flow or movement through one side or the other. I'm just taking that for a baseline right now. Good. And then just take in your right hand. You can turn your palm towards your face. Drop your pointer finger and your middle finger down to your palm. You can squeeze your ring finger and your pinky finger together. You can take a nice full breath in. And then covering the left side, just breathe out the right. 
Good. And then cover the right, release the left. Inhale, left. Cover the left, release the right. Exhale, right. Good. Now take a breath in again on the right. Cover the right, release the left. Exhale, left. Take a breath in on the left. Cover the left, release the right, exhale right. Good, take a breath in on the right. Cover the right, release the left, exhale left. All right, so now you're getting the hang of it. So you're always gonna start with an exhale on the one side, finish off with the inhale, and then transfer over to the other side. Good, and a nice, smooth, easy breath. So resist the urge to kind of chop the breath in half or do it a little bit faster. See if you can feel the complete breath, even if you feel like one side or the other is blocked. Still, just continue to breathe. As you move through this breath work technique, keep those shoulders soft and down. Let the breath be nice and strong and full. So continue moving back and forth like that. The last thing you can do is take a breath in on the right side. And then once you've found that place, then you can let your hand come back down to your lap. No need to rush. Good, and then when you release that breathwork technique again, just inquire, notice what's feeling as you inhale, what you're noticing as you exhale. Noticing any shift or change in your energy. Good, and then again, also for balance, just taking the hands together into prayer position. So left hand with the right hand that sense of union and as you drop your hands down in front of your heart, resisting the hands in towards each other, but still feeling that spaciousness at the palms of the hands, but everywhere that reflection of balance. Good. So give yourself a moment just to be here at the heart center, summoning up your courage for your practice. Summoning up your courage to stay in this inquiry with your body, your heart, your mind. Never give up. Good. What do you want to fuel up or what do you need courage for in your life right now? So just imagining that, maybe dedicating your practice. And then when you're ready, you can drop your chin to your chest. If your eyes are closed, you can blink your eyes open into your fingertips. Just lift your head back on top of your spine. And then you can make your way to your mat. So if you're not on your mat already, go ahead and come onto your hands and your knees on your mat. <clears throat> and you might wanna have a block close by or two blocks close by as we've done. 
in case you need those. And then just settling your hands underneath your shoulders, knees under hips. Stretch out through your toes, stretch out through your fingertips and take a breath. And then as you exhale, just push the floor around your back. Especially feel into that upper back as you inhale, drop your heart down, lengthen out your neck as you lift your head and your tail. And then exhale, round. So maybe paying a little bit of attention, more attention from the heart up as you move through cat-cow. So really articulating the thoracic spine, the cervical spine, keeping your neck nice and long as you move from one to the other. So the tendency is just to let your head lift up here, right? And then you just crunch your neck. So instead, scoop out, reach out through the crown of the head, shoulders down away from the ears. Good, just one more breath like that. As you take a breath in, come back to a neutral spine. Nice and long, take a breath out your mouth. Good, so inhale to lengthen out the spine. Exhale to engage your abdominal muscles. Snuggle them up and in towards your spine. One more breath in. Exhale out the mouth. Little bit of a tuck in your tailbone just to lengthen out your low back. So with that strength, then stretch your right hand forward. Stretch your left leg back. Maybe put your toes on the floor, your fingers on the floor. That could be fine or you could come back here if you need to. If you want to challenge yourself a little bit, lift your leg, lift your arm, reach out like a pointer dog through your left heel and through your right fingers. Again, every time you use that breath out the mouth, just to swaddle your belly, create a little bit more strength at the core. All right, so if you want, you can bring in a little bit of movement here. So taking a breath in, extend out. As you exhale, pull the knee and the elbow in towards the middle as you round. Inhale, a little bit of a lengthening, especially through the neck, exhale, and round. Just like that, moving back and forth, breath by breath. Good, just a couple more times like that. Feel your strength. Even if you can't feel your strength, feel the intensity. Notice the sensations in the body. Next time as you exhale, you can let that right hand land. You're gonna flip that left foot down to the floor, arch behind the right toes. And then once you've got that left leg planted, you can spin your right foot off of the side of the mat so that you can have a little kickstand there. Right hand's gonna take the weight of the body. You can inhale and lift that left arm up. This is a really great to just kind of stretch into places that we kind of neglect throughout the day. So getting a little bit more space into the shoulders, the chest, the upper back. Good, even the front of that left hip. You can feel that opening as you reach out into your left heel. All right, so feel those points of contact. Grip into your right fingers, press down through the top of your right foot. We're gonna bring some movement in here. So take a breath. As you exhale, let this left arm go past your face. You can bend your left knee, sweep the back of the left hand on the floor. Only takes a couple times to get it. Inhale, lift up, straightening out the left leg. Exhale, pull through. So circling that left arm all the way around. So much space into that left shoulder. Good. This is definitely a good um, antidote to sitting at a desk all day, kind of rounding forward. So getting a little bit of space into the front body here. Good. Maybe just a couple more times like that. Maybe these are the slowest ones yet. Yeah, and then when you take a breath in, stretch that left arm up. Breathe out your mouth again. 
Good, with that strength, see if it feels okay to lift that left leg up. So feel that challenge, flexing your left foot, gripping into your right fingers. Yeah, so it's kind of like a Ardha Chandrasana or half moon pose on its side here, a little bit lower. Yeah, take a breath in here. Let's challenge this even more. As you exhale, bend your right knee, left knee, grab a hold of the top of your left foot, and then press that left hip forward. We feel almost a little bit of a back bend. The shoulder blades start to squeeze in towards each other as you stretch across the front body, especially that left side of the chest. Keep your neck nice and long. Good, take a breath in, breathe out your mouth. Inhale, extend out that left leg and that left arm again. And then lowering the left foot down, lowering the left hand down. You can come right back to hands and knees. Get the weight off of those wrists for a second as we come down onto our forearms. Good. Just letting your head drop down into that space between your arms. And then coming back up onto your hands and your knees again. If you need to, at any point, take weight off of your wrists. It's always a good idea just to come down onto your forearms. Lift the heart up into the chest so that you're taking some of that pressure out of your hands. And just take a breath in here. And then as you exhale, round your back. You look back towards your belly button. As you inhale, lengthen out your neck as you draw your heart forward between your arms and then exhale and round. And again, just moving back and forth like that, breath by breath. Good, and then taking a breath in, coming back to that neutral spine. Exhale out your mouth. Good and strong, feel that strength. Take a breath in, long spine. Exhale out the mouth. Good, one more time like that, inhale. Exhale out the mouth. Ah, perfect, stretch that left hand in front of you and stretch that right leg back. So starting out with your fingers on the floor, your toes on the floor, and this might be right where you stay, right? Or you might lift up, maybe just the leg, maybe the arm, maybe just the arm. Good, so fine tuning it where you're at your peak of strength, but not beyond, because you don't want to lose your breath, right? You don't want to be able to lose the rest of your practice or forfeit the rest of your practice. Good. So tune in with the breath as you inhale and extend out. And then as you exhale, pull the knee and the elbow in. Inhale and extend out. Exhale, pull it in. Good, just like that, breath by breath. And strength throughout, extending. And pulling in, maybe one more extension. And then as you exhale, land that left hand. You can turn your right foot so that it lands behind your left foot this time. Left foot's gonna spin off to the side of the mat. So now my left hand's gonna take the weight of my body as I just fan that right arm up towards the ceiling. Good. So anchoring back into that right foot. When you do that, you can feel this uh, upper rib cage revolve around, a little bit of a spin opening up the front of that right hip. Good, feel your purchase here. So top of the left foot presses down. You can reach out into that right heel and into the right left fingertips. Good, so breath in here. Exhale out your mouth. Good, take a breath in. 
Exhale, right arm in front of your face. So you can bend your right knee, scoop the back of the hand on the floor. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, pull back. Just like that. Sometimes it feels good to close the eyes so you can concentrate a little bit more on what you're doing. Stay present to the movement, the sensations in your body. If you can just reach out a little bit further through that right hand, traction out your shoulder a little bit. Maybe one more big wide circle. And then taking a breath and stretching that right hand up. Take your breath out your mouth again. Good, we'll need that strength as we lift the right foot up, flexing the right toes. Find your balance, feel your strength, starting to open up the heart so shoulder blades start to press in towards each other. You can take a breath in here. As you exhale, take that right hand down to find to the top of your right foot. Once you clasp the top of your foot, you can press that right hip forward. You could um, take a strap also, that could be an extension for your right arm. You could loop that strap around the top of your foot. So give yourself a little bit more strength, stability. Good, feel that heart open, chest stretching, shoulder blades squeeze. All right, take a breath in. Exhale out your mouth. Inhale, stretch out. And then exhale, come to land. Back to hands and knees and then down to your forearms just to rest, let your head drop. Good, and then just coming down all the way onto your belly. So walk your legs back. You can let the fronts of the hips come down to the floor. You can walk the tops of your feet back so that you're really lengthening out your legs. Good, and then you can let your head just hover. So keep your neck nice and long, just like we did in cat cow before. And just stick your arms right along your sides. Good, so palms turn in towards each other. Shoulders roll up, around and down the back. Take a breath in, press into the fronts of the hips and the tops of the feet as you lift. Good, keep breathing, stretching from the heart out. Lots of strength through the back body. Maybe even a little tuck of the chin so that you can keep your neck nice and long. Go a little bit higher as you inhale. And then as you exhale, let your right cheek come to the floor. Good, you can rest. Let all effort go out of the arms, the legs, the hands, the feet. And then just to engage again, starting out by activating the legs, pressing the tops of the feet down to the floor. You can feel the front of the hip points press down to the floor. We might do that same thing that we did last time. So maybe lift your head up, lengthen out your spine, especially your neck, turn your palms in towards each other. That might be enough. So that same lift that we just did, you might want to reach your arms up behind your back, interlace your fingers, start from there. As you press down the fronts of the hips, the tops of the feet, Take a breath and lengthen your spine as you lift and breathe. Good, open the heart, keep the neck long. One more breath in as you lift and then exhale to lower. This time you can take your left cheek to the floor, let your arms and legs rest. Good, one more 
stretch here. So again, you can go back to those ones if they feel more appropriate for you. We're gonna try Bhujangasana, so Cobra Pose. You can point your elbows straight back towards the back of your mat, press the tops of your feet down so your kneecaps lift. Put your hands on the floor, but we're not gonna push into our hands. We're gonna keep our spine nice and long, squeeze the shoulder blades in towards each other, and as you inhale, lift your chest. You don't even have to use your hands. Good, breathe. Maybe lifting just a little bit higher as you breathe in. And then as you exhale, let your hands plant to the floor, turn your toes, lift yourself right up and back into downward dog. Neutral spine, so keep your knees as bent as you need to. Belly presses back towards the thighs. And then starting to pedal out your heels a little bit. Move into the backs of the legs. Notice how your back feels when you stretch. Come up onto your tiptoes, stretch your heels down, take the weight back, back, back into your legs. Good, and then just walk your hands back about one hand length back, a little bit closer to your feet. That might mean you get your heels down on the ground, but that doesn't have to be a goal. I just want your hands to be a little bit closer to your feet. You can take your right hand off of the floor, Reach it across the midline to the outside of your left ankle. Take a breath in, and then as you exhale, twist to look underneath your left armpit. Good, take a breath in, replant that right hand. Exhale, press the heels down as you press your belly back. Good, inhale, let that left hand now reach across the midline to the outside of your right ankle. Probably have to open the heart length in the spine again. And then from there, as you exhale, turn to look underneath your right armpit. Good, take a breath in. Exhale, release that left hand back down, stretching back and through downward dog, just for a couple of breaths, maybe eat your hands out a little bit. Good, and then lowering yourself down, let your knees go open wide. So we're gonna take a child's pose, if that feels good for you, if your knees you know, are cranky and revolt against this, you can always come forward onto your forearms instead. So if you'd like a nice release for your shoulders, you can come back into child's pose, let your elbows rest on the floor, and then you can take prayer hands right behind your neck. So I'm talking about it first, and I'm gonna take it. And then just leaving your elbows on the floor, you can roll out your wrists a little bit, get some space there, circling around. Good. And then just pressing yourself up to a seated position. You can just stretch yourself out into a seated staff pose, Dandasana. So you can come to sit on your hips if you need one. You can use a blanket or a cushion underneath your hips for a little bit of support for your spine. All right, so we started stretching out the backs of the legs in downward dog. Let's see how they go here from this position. So starting out, just flexing the feet, pressing the backs of the knees to the floor. You can even use your hands to press down into your thigh bones to lift and open the chest. Good. 
good. So sometimes you hear me talk about when we're in Tadasana, we start out in Tadasana and then we consider that alignment as we move into other poses. Same thing from a seated position, starting in Dandasana, so staff pose, and then varying it to move into the next pose. So when you're ready, you can bend your right knee, take your right foot up next to your right hip. A couple different possibilities here. So maybe you keep your foot right next to your hip. You might step your right foot over the top of your left knee. Just remember to keep that left foot flexed. This might be plenty. You might bend that left knee and take the left foot back next to the right hip. If that feels sustainable or like a good challenge for you. And it might be different on each day. This is really a time to go bold if you can. Making sure you're monitoring your breath. So if the breath gets stalled, you can't uh, do the pose without losing your breath, then maybe back off. That's why we've got these steps. All right, so then just taking that left elbow around the right knee, snuggle it in towards your belly as you lengthen out your spine. Again, draw the heart forward, shoulder blades press in. This is a really nice stretch for the outside of the thigh. You can feel that right hip opening. But the twists are great for releasing anything that's kind of built up inside, whether it's heat in the body, whether it's toxins in the body, mental toxins, physical toxins, you ate too much, you watched too much, you looked at social media too much, you get to squeeze out the too much. You might want to stay here if you want to take this twist a little bit more into the rib cage of the thoracic spine. You could take your right hand back behind your right hip. You can use the breath in to reach up through the left arm. And then as you exhale, hook that left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Use that leverage to spin. If you need to move things like bellies, boobs, things like that out of the way, you can move them over for your comfort. So don't push into a place that feels like, again, it's going to impinge on your breath. Work with your body and be courageous. Inquiry and courage in equal measure. Good. Take a breath in here. As you exhale, unwind, heart back towards your knees. And then you might stay in this position. If this is too intense for you or you don't have that left leg tucked back in, you might just want to come back to a cross-legged position with your right leg in front. If you can tolerate it, you can take your right foot back towards the left hip a little bit. Stack your knees on top of each other into Gomukhasana. So stretching out the hips. Good, spine is nice and long. Yeah. All right, if you have a strap close by, that would be great. You can grab that strap. You can take that strap into your left hand. And then as you take a breath in, lift that left arm up over your head, bend your left elbow and let your strap drop behind your back. You can reach your right arm out to the side and then sweep that right hand back behind you, reaching for the strap from below. So you might have the strap in between your hands. Some of us are flexible enough, we can grab a hold of our fingers. And so just noticing that. That spine is nice and long, sense of shoulder blades pushing in towards each other. Good squeeze as you open the heart and the short shoulders. Good. For these last few breaths, you might even take yourself to a little bit of a forward fold. So taking a breath in. As you exhale, the heart bows forward. Elbows keep pressing back. Good. Nice. So just taking a breath in to sit up, good and tall. You can release your right hand over to the side. Take that strap and place it over to your side. Stretch out your legs one at a time. Even if you're in a cross-legged position, coming back through Dandasana, staff pose. 
good. I was kind of think it's funny to notice the difference between side to side. It's almost like one leg is a little bit longer than the other one. So you can feel the effect of your practice. You might want to grab your buns, push them over to the side so you can sit up good and tall on your sits bones, flexing your feet, maybe pressing your thigh bones down to open your heart. Good, remember this, remember this alignment, let it sink into every single cell and then vary it by bending your left knee first. You can take your left foot up next to your left hip, right? That might be the spot, this is the sweet spot. Maybe you step your left foot over the top of your right knee, getting closer, noticing if the sits bones are still both on the floor. Yeah, if they're good to go, maybe you bend that right knee, take your right foot back next to your left hip, sit up good and tall. Good, so find that appropriate place for you to be and breathe. Be in partnership with the courage that exists within you. Good, go bold, go brave. And maybe you wanna stay here. Maybe you wanna right the, <laughs> wrap this left knee into your right arm. You can place your arms together at the outside of your thigh. Just giving your knee a good squeeze right in towards your belly, keeping your spine nice and long. You'll feel that gun in the outside of the left hip, outside of the left thigh. And that might be the spot for you. You can vary this a little bit and bring the twist up a little bit higher in the spine by letting the left hand land behind the left hip. Taking a breath and reaching that right arm up. As you exhale, hook that right elbow to the outside of your knee. Again, moving body, folds, etc., over to the side as needed. And just like with any twist, every breath in is a chance to lengthen the spine, lift the heart. Every breath out, a chance to stretch and twist. Good, take a breath in. And then as you exhale, you can unwind, come back through the center. I'm gonna spin myself to the middle here. So same orientation with the legs, except I'm gonna pull that left foot back next to my right hip so that I can start to stack my knees over each other. Sitting down into both sits bones, nice long spine. Good, and then if you have that strap close by, grab your strap, be prepared, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> you can take your strap into your left hand. You can reach that left arm up and over the top of your head. Bend your left elbow and let the strap fall behind your back. Let that right arm reach around. Nope, oh, you know what? Left arm reaches around. So right arm is up overhead, left arm is reaching around. Sorry about that. <laughs> your strap is falling down from your left hand. You're reaching up with your right hand behind you and you might notice that your hands are really close together this time or they're a lot further apart. Really, really common. So noticing where your hands are on the strap as you create tension between the hands, using that strap or maybe even meeting the fingers together. Good, heart is open, elbows pressing back. And then maybe you stay here sitting up or maybe for three more breaths you forward fold. So taking a breath in, exhale, heart draws forward towards the knees. Elbows keep pressing back, spine is long. Good, and then taking a breath in to come back up and sit. You can release that left arm out to the side, take your strap away and put it over to the side as well. Stretch your legs back out in front of you, 
unwind, reaching out through your heels, sitting up good and tall on your sits bones, maybe pressing your hands down into your thighs to open your chest. And just breathe and notice the effects of that stretch. And then just coming into a cross-legged position that feels comfortable. So maybe you've got, if you can remember back, you've got your leg in the opposite position that you had it when you started. <laughs> you might lean forward to the front of the sits bone. So that you're sitting up nice and tall. Good. And then just taking your hands back behind you, just interlace your fingers behind your back, stretch your arms out. Lots of heat in the body at this point. So a lot of heat across the shoulders and the upper back. Feel the shoulder blades squeeze. Feel that stretch across the chest, even so bold as to lift the hands away from the low back. Good, take a breath in here. And then as you exhale, take your hands right around to the front. Imagine you're holding a big ball in front of you. You can cave back, round your back, drop your chin. Nice, just take a breath in and sit up tall. Lift your head. You're gonna interlace your fingers and press your palms away from your heart. And then if you can, start to lift your hands up. So stretching out those shoulders. Good. Taking a breath in here, you can leave that left arm reaching up as you exhale the right hand down by your side. So we're gonna let that left arm go over the top of the head. Left fingers reach for the right ear. Left ear drops towards the left shoulder. We're gonna mirror that by maybe pressing down through the right palm. Good, maybe even pressing the right palm back a little bit. Okay, just fine tuning, moving in. Again, with courage and inquiry, pressing the head into the hand at the same time as you resist your hand back into your head. Beautiful. Now slide that left hand around to the left side of your head. Use your hand to press your head back on top of your spine and then take a breath in and reach both arms back up. Let's switch to the other side. So let that left hand come down by your side, right arm over the top of your head, reaching for your left ear. Right ear dips towards the right shoulder. So that's the first step. Then pressing down through your left hand. You feel good, you might press your left hand back just a little bit. You feel that shoulder blade soften down the back. And then maybe resist the head into the hand at the same time as you resist your hand into your head. Take a breath in, reach that right arm up. You can take your right hand around to the right side of your head. Use your hand to press your head back up on top of your spine. Let your hands come to rest for a moment, just as you notice. Good, you're welcome to stay here for as long as you'd like. We're gonna make our way down towards the floor next. So maybe just scattering your space with your uh, support props whatever you might need later for relaxation. So you might have a blanket close by or a sheet. You might have a bolster if you wanna use that for support. So again, just making sure you gather those things around. If you need a drink of water, wanna grab an eye pillow, 
getting those things ready. And then once you are ready with all of your props around you, we're gonna take broken wing pose to really, really stretch across the chest again. So when you're ready, you can come, I'm gonna face towards you so you can see what I'm doing, but I'm gonna come down on my right side, okay? So when I come down onto my right side, I'm gonna reach that right hand out. And there's a couple different possibilities here. I might keep my right elbow bent at 90 degrees I let, as I let my chest come to the floor, turn my head to the left side, right? You might feel more comfortable stretching your right arm all the way out towards the side as you let your cheek come to the floor. Good, so you're just checking in to see which position feels the most sustainable for you. And then once you've got that position lined up, just come to rest, rest of the body gets heavy. Good. And again, if you want to strengthen the stretch a little bit, you can put your left fingers on the floor, press that left shoulder back over the top of the right shoulder to increase the stretch. So you feel it at the front of the right, the right side of your chest. And then when you're ready, pressing up through the center, you can just roll around onto your belly, stretch that left arm forward in front of you or out to the side if that feels better. So you might just turn towards the right side, let your right cheek come to the floor. It might feel better to take that 90 degree angle with your left elbow. So just experimenting a little bit. You can also rotate your upper body to find the most appropriate pose. So you might stack your hips, your knees, your ankles. That makes it a little bit more intense. Or maybe you keep that lower leg straightened. Again, if you want to build intensity here, you could take your right fingertips to the ground, pull that right shoulder back over the top of the left shoulder. Taking a breath in, coming back up. You can come through center. You can let your arms rest underneath your forehead. Let your head rest down onto your arms. That way you can turn your toes off to the sides. Let your heels drop in towards each other. Rest and melt down into the floor. That's a crocodile pose, makrakasana. Just letting yourself rest there. Feel the breath moving in the belly. And then when you're ready from there, you can make your way over onto your back. So as you roll over onto your back, you can bend your knees, put your feet about hip distance apart. So we're setting up for a bridge pose. We have done so much work to open up the chest and the shoulders. So this bridge pose will probably feel really nice. 
So you can come right onto your back. Knees bent, feet underneath the knees. Remove the ponytail as needed. And then just bending your elbows. Let your hands come back behind your head. Let your elbows open up to the sides. Use your thumbs to feel your neck here. Might be a little bit of a massage as you notice. So what I want you to just notice is that there's space underneath your neck. So space between your neck and the mat. If you don't have space between your neck and the mat, press the back of your head into the floor. See if you can make a little bit more of an arch. If you don't have space underneath your neck still, this is probably a pose that's contraindicated for you. So just making sure you've got a healthy neck before you engage in this bridge pose. Good, and then just releasing your head to the floor. You can let your arms come along your sides. You can turn your palms in towards each other, just like we did when we were laying down on our bellies as we started. And then bend your elbows at 90 degrees and just press your upper arms down into the floor. You might even feel that need to kind of lift the heart and draw the shoulder blades in towards each other. Press down at the base of your big toes. You want your feet to stay nice and grounded. Taking a breath in. As you exhale, press down into your elbows to start to lift your hips and your chest, not losing that curve in your neck. So neck, uh, head stays just where it is. The sternum, the chest starts to lift towards the chin. Good, and if you press down into your arms, you might feel your shoulder blades wanting to walk in towards the midline. You might leave the arms like this, or you might take your hands down underneath you, interlace your fingers, kind of like we did when we were in that seated position. Good, strong breath. Lengthening out through the inner knees. Nice, long, low back. Good, take a breath in, go a little bit higher, and then walking the arms out to the sides, letting your hips come back down to the floor. Just take a pause for a moment, notice, notice. Good, so this time to challenge yourself a little bit, you might wanna walk your feet in a little bit closer to your hips. So scooch the balls of your feet back, let your heels come down to the ground. Feet are still about hip distance apart, but this will give you a little bit more space to lift the chest. Maybe the arms stay by the sides, those kind of robot arms with the palms in, or maybe you already know that you're gonna to wanna to interlace your arms underneath you, so pressing the arms along the sides. Taking a breath in. Exhale, push down into the hands to lift. So lift the spine one bone at a time. Imagine lifting a string of pearls up and away from the floor. You can walk your shoulder blades in towards each other. Interlace your fingers underneath your low back. Good, you're up on your shoulders. You've got space underneath your neck. Back of the head presses into the floor, gazes straight up at the sky. Good, if you're feeling the front of your thighs start to burn, maybe indicate it's time to stretch out those quads a little bit more. So another way to go, that's a good prep for a bridge pose is to do any kind of stretching for the front of your thighs. Good, take a breath in, go up a little bit higher if you can. Exhale, walk your arms out to the sides, let your hips come down to the ground, and then let your knees just wobble a little bit from side to side. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Good, and then you can just gather your knees in towards your belly, maybe get a little bit of a rock from side to side. And this is a great place to just check in. Check in with the body, see if there's anything else that's needed. So any other stretches, you might wanna take another bridge pose, you might wanna take a happy baby. 
or anything else that might feel balancing, strengthening, whatever it is that you're here for. And then when you get ready, no rush, but when you get ready to come to a resting pose, if it's part of your practice, consider an inversion of some sort, maybe a shoulder stand, headstand if you're down with that, if your neck is feeling good and healthy. And then another kind of inversion that you can take, which is more of a resting inversion, is to take legs up the wall. So you might wanna take a bolster or a blanket for your hips. You can take yourself up against the wall and then just feed your legs up the wall. When you do that, you do not have to have your hips up against the wall, so you can have space between your hips and the wall. That's perfectly fine. You might even have a little bend in your knees. If you're doing any kind of exercise that might uh, build lactic acid in the legs, so like running, walking, or fluid buildup, it might feel really nice to just elevate the legs, kind of reverse the flow. Good. There's all traditional shavasana as well. So that might be stretching out nice and long. Remember this time of year, sometimes it's good to go bold with the arms, the legs. You might stretch them out a little further from center than usual. Get kind of audacious with your spread. <laughs> Good, take your courage with you here. Sometimes Shavasana is the toughest pose that we have. So those of us that are really, really um, in the doing, the producing mode, keeping ourselves busy all the time, might not feel that good to come into a pose where you're quiet and you are met with the contents of your mind. So again, just moving in with courage and inquiry. Good. As you settle yourself into place, I've got a reading for you from the Dalai Lama, 14th Dalai Lama, Kundun, His Holiness. When I think about or consider some of the challenges that he's met in his life, if you haven't seen the movie Kundun, it's wonderful if you want to know anything about the history of Tibet or his life. And I once saw him, I've seen him speak lots of times. One time I heard him teach that um, the greatest fear that he had when he was fleeing Tibet because it had been occupied by the Chinese, um, his people had been killed, he was being threatened so much so that he needed to leave the country. He said the biggest fear that he had was to have hatred for the Chinese within him. So no matter what happened, he didn't want to lose that compassion and that humanity of being connected to anyone who might be perceived as the other. So this is called Never Give Up. Never give up, no matter what is going on. Never give up. Develop the heart. Too much energy in your country is spent developing the mind instead of the heart. Be compassionate, not just to your friends, but to everyone. Be compassionate. Work for peace in your heart and in the world. Work for peace. And I say again, never give up, no matter, matter what is happening, no matter what is going on around you, never give up. So with courage and inquiry, just meeting your breath again. Feel it flowing in 
You might feel that cool air moving in, feel it circulate through, and then the warm air moving out. Good, you might notice or get curious about whether you can feel it through the right side or the left side a little bit more. Good, and then just letting the back of your body touch the floor, the wall, the props. So feeling the back of your head release, back of the shoulders. You might feel the back of the arms against the floor, backs of the hands. Feel the shoulder blades on the floor and both the spine touching the floor and the spine having space from the floor. Feel the weight of the pelvis. And then if legs are up the wall, you might transition to this feeling against the wall instead of the floor, but feeling the calf muscles and the heels. But the whole back of the body, that west body in touch with the earth. Good, and then tracing along the soles of your feet. Feel the tips of your toes. Transition around to the east body as you feel the tops of your feet. And your shins, your knees, and the thighs. Feel the pool of the belly. and the courage, the audacity of the heart. But the fronts of the shoulders, the chin, the nose, the cheeks, the forehead, the mouth and the backs of the eyes. Noticing the left ear, the left shoulder, left arm, the left side of your torso, the left hip, and the outside of the left leg, all the way down to the left pinky toe. And notice the right ear the right side of your head, right side of your neck, and your right shoulder, right arm, and right hand, right side of the torso, right hip, outside of the right leg, all the way down to the outside of the right ankle, right pinky toe, Feel the heart also sided, right and left side, top and bottom. Beating and connection with all living things. With courage, let go.
So with courage and inquiry, noticing your breath. And stretching out boldly into the body, the hands, the feet, fingers and toes, neck and head starting to stretch and reach to come back alive as you move a little bit. Good. You might bring your knees in towards your belly. If your legs are up against the wall, bending your knees and placing the soles of the feet against the wall. And then bringing yourself over onto your side if you're not there already. Good, and then making your way up to a seated position if you can, maybe taking the hands together into prayer position once more, right in front of the heart. Good, so remember this breathwork technique that we started out with Nadi Shodna is for balance, but it really is a great tool to use when you need to increase your stamina for difficult conversations or the courage to face what's happening right now or to what's happening within us. So as His Holiness said, um, we have to work for peace in, in our hearts and in the world, both, both of those. So as you come back to your heart right now at the end of your practice, and remember, this is always just the beginning of the next practice, right? So we might be finishing up this round only to translate this inner work into our outer work. So what is necessary next? What is that next right step? So as you feel that, just pressing your knuckles in to seal that knowing, you can drop your chin down to your chest, and gently blink your eyes open into your fingertips, and then lift your head back on top of your spine. Namaste.